Attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. These words, penned by the French philosopher Simone Weil, hold a depth and a challenge that resonate across time and circumstance. Simone Weil, a woman of fierce intellect and profound spiritual insight, lived a relatively short life marked by both privilege and a commitment to understanding the plight of the oppressed. Her writings offer a powerful lens for examining the world and critically our place within it. Today we're going to explore two of Weil's most influential concepts, attention and affliction. For Weil, these were not merely abstract ideas, but were intertwined, carrying a profound potential for both understanding and even transforming the experience of being human. When we hear the word attention, most of us think of the ability to focus, to concentrate on a task. But Weil's understanding went far deeper. For her, true attention was more than an intellectual exercise. It was an act of surrender, an emptying of the self. It resembled a form of prayer or meditation, where our usual, self-centered preoccupations are set aside in order to fully receive and perceive the reality of another, whether that other is a person, an object, or an idea. Let's take a moment to consider this. In a world that bombards us with information, distractions, and demands, the kind of attention Simone Weil describes feels increasingly rare. Our minds flit from one thought to the next, one notification to another. Can we even imagine what it would mean to give something, or someone, our undivided presence as an act of generosity? This radical emptying of self, the core of Simone Weil's concept of attention, opens the door for a unique type of empathy. It's not merely feeling sympathy for another's pain, but involves stepping into the landscape of their experience fully, not as a passive observer, but as someone willing to be changed by what they witness. It requires relinquishing our need to control the narrative or offer immediate solutions. Weil saw this level of attention as a moral obligation, especially when it came to witnessing the suffering of others. Those who were truly capable of such attention couldn't remain indifferent to the experiences of the marginalized or the oppressed. For a while, perceiving the stark reality of someone's pain made apathy impossible. It naturally gave rise to the desire to act, to bring about tangible change. Of course, this is a demanding understanding of empathy. It invites questions. Is such a radical openness to the experiences of others truly realistic? Does this level of participation ultimately lead to burnout or despair, especially considering the sheer amount of suffering in the world? These are valid concerns, and ones that Weil grappled with throughout her own life. Her constant engagement in acts of social justice took a physical and emotional toll. Perhaps Weil's concept of attention offers a profound challenge rather than a daily prescription. True empathy, in her view, might be achievable in moments, flashes of deep connection with a stranger, or an urgent response when witnessing injustice. The goal then would be cultivating the inner capacity for such attention, even when we can't sustain it constantly. When we think of affliction, images of physical pain or hardship may immediately come to mind. But for Simone Weil, affliction encompassed a far wider range of human experience. It was not just bodily suffering, but also the profound spiritual and existential anguish that can shake a person to their core. This might involve loss, loneliness, feelings of utter meaninglessness, or the crushing weight of injustice witnessed both in one's own life or in the experiences of others. Importantly, in Weil's philosophy, affliction has a destructive power. It strips away our illusions of control, shatters our preconceptions, and forces us to confront the often unbearable reality of our vulnerability. This destructive power can leave one feeling fragmented, adrift in a world that seems hostile or indifferent. While recognize this deeply unsettling aspect of affliction, yet within this destruction she also saw an opening, a chance to glimpse a deeper, perhaps harsher, but ultimately truer understanding of the world and ourselves. It's this potential that prompts one of the greatest critiques of Weil's thought. Is there a danger in seeing something akin to beauty or nobility in suffering? Was Weil in some sense romanticizing pain? Her answers were never simple. She never sought to glorify pain. She didn't deny its raw brutality. Rather, she bore witness to it, both within her own life and within the wider landscape of human experience, recognizing its potential to act as a strange and terrible catalyst for transformation. 
the destruction wrought by affliction could, with the proper orientation, strip away the obstacles to a more profound and honest connection, both with oneself and with the reality of a shared, vulnerable human existence. Despite all the devastation that affliction can bring, Simone Weil insisted on a potential for grace, a possibility of transcendence even within unimaginable suffering. This hinges on her radical concept of attention. She speaks of turning one's full attention towards the reality of suffering, without flinching, whether that suffering is our own or that of another. This isn't about finding a rational explanation or offering premature comfort. It's a direct encounter with the raw truth of the moment. It sounds counterintuitive, almost cruel. Yet for a while, this unwavering attention contains the seed of a strange grace. It offers a space where the illusions of the ego, our habitual self-defenses, can further dissolve. The self, so often the source of both our pride and our insecurities, begins to withdraw in the face of something overwhelmingly real. Now this perspective can be easily misinterpreted. While wasn't advocating that we seek out or deliberately cause suffering, but what she did believe was that when affliction arrives, and for most of us it does in some form, it's a critical juncture. We can resist, withdraw further into ourselves, or we can attempt the incredibly difficult practice of attention. This isn't about passivity, but an active, engaged focus even within the heart of pain. Weil's ideas here connect with concepts explored in certain therapeutic modalities, such as mindfulness within trauma-informed healing work. They resonate with the act of bearing witness, a fundamental practice in seeking justice. They remind us, even darkly, of a possibility for meaning in the face of experiences seemingly devoid of it. As we reflect on Simone Weil's work, the interwoven strands of attention, empathy, and affliction remain both challenging and deeply compelling. Her insistence on the moral imperative of attention, on the destructive yet potentially transformative nature of affliction, these are ideas that stay with us long after the echoes of this conversation fade. Did Weil provide definitive answers? Perhaps not. But the searching quality of her writings leaves us with a potent legacy. The invitation to explore the profound potential of attention within our own lives, to consider our response to suffering, both our own and that of others, and to question the stories we tell ourselves about what it means to be human. Thank you for joining me today on this exploration of Simone Weil's extraordinary thought. If her words and ideas sparked questions, reflections, or even a renewed desire to practice deep attention, please share your thoughts in the comments below. Your insights contribute to the ongoing conversation inspired by this remarkable philosopher. And if you found this exploration valuable, please like and share it to help others encounter her work.